Bow your heads, please. Father God, I want to thank you for just getting us all here together today and just giving us the breath of life to be here waking us up because today was not promised yesterday. Today is a gift from you, Lord, and we don't want to squander it. We want to use today to worship you, Lord, and learn more about the word and learn more about you, Lord. And when pastor comes up to teach us about you more, may our hearts be open. May our ears be vigilant. May we be accepting of whatever you're going to teach us today, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. I think we got announcements. Go for it. Oh, yeah. The announcement you all know, and we keep saying it every week, we have Bible study on Sunday. Please come. Do we have food there? We do have food. Ah, we have food. Ah, it's pretty good. Can it's at a has been happening. Get on top of it. Thank you. <laughs> As you can see on the times, oh, never mind. Uh, we're doing New City Cataclysms. C catechisms. Uh, what are we doing? Questions. What does the question say? Can anyone keep the law perfectly? No. There's the answer. No, you can't. No human is able to keep the law perfectly because Adam and Eve sinned. We are born with a corrupt nature. Next question. Is there another question? There is multiple questions. Ah, what is sin? That is a great question. Oh boy. Sin is rejecting or ignoring God in the world he created, rebelling against him by living without reference to him, not being or doing what he requires in his law, resulting in our death and the disintegration, disintegration of all creation. Yeehaw. I think that's it. But never mind. Oh, uh, new questions for this week. What is idolatry? And the answer says, idolatry is trusting, wait, what? Is trusting in created things rather than the creator for our hope and happiness, significance, and security. Next question. Will God allow our disobedience, disobedience and idolatry to go unpunished? I think that's a pretty easy answer. No. Every sin is against the sovereignty, hold, the sovereignty, holiness, and goodness of God, and against the righteous law. And God is righteously angry with our sin and will punish them in his just judgment, both in his and not his life, this life and the life to come. Is questions that it? For uh, questions for tonight. Small group. Small group questions. What do the questions say? We are a couple. Was a what? Not we. What are a couple of examples of idolatry in the Bible? What does idolatry look like today? And is God right to punish people because of their idolatry? Is there any questions? Are you markets like break? Oh. <laughs>
on? Is the mic on? Oh, there we go. All right, let's bring it back over here real quick. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this a little bit more. I hope that uh, I hope that you that you guys all had as enlightening of a discussion as we did because let me tell you, these guys know their stuff over here. All right, that was good times. There are so many girls here. I didn't even realize. What's up? All right, y'all are like outnumbering these guys like three to one. All right, there you go. All right, awesome, awesome. So, um, guys, I, I know I introduced myself to most of y'all already face to face. Uh, I know that you met me a couple other times as well, but I want to remind you who I am so that you're like not just sitting there wondering who is this bald guy talking to me. Uh, and don't ever call me bald. Uh, my name is Joseph Duggar. It's on the screen. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm Joseph Duggar. Uh, I am the, the new student minister here, so I'm excited to get to know you guys and, uh, and to worship with you all. So, um, yeah, so these were some interesting, uh, interesting conversations or interesting topics, right? Idolatry, it's not really something that uh, typically, something that we talked about in our group over here was that idolatry isn't really something that we talk about or think about very often in our context, right? Like not, not too often anyways. Um, but I'm interested to hear, so I know my group, I already talked with y'all, so I know what you think about it. I'm interested to hear some other things, though. Can you pull the questions back up, Blake? Thank you. Um, all right, so from another group, somebody give me an example of idolatry in the Bible. What would you come up with? They wouldn't bow down to the, yeah, to the idol, right? What you got? He had something. He had it. I can see it. I know. I saw it. What's up, Catherine? Yeah, they created that calf, right? Like they had just heard about the Ten Commandments and God said not to make idols. And then Moses turned around and what did they do? They made an idol, right? All right. Did you think of it? All right. All right. So, um, all right. So that, that's good. Yeah. So you guys got a, had a pretty good understanding of what uh, some some examples of idolatry in the Bible. What about uh, what does idolatry look like today? What you got? Yeah. Yeah. Some people put their faith in in in, uh, in elected leaders, right? What's up? Ourselves. Ourselves. Yeah. We're really selfish. What's up? I did you say dude? Oh, I thought you said dude to get my attention. <laughs> Okay, anyways, yes, iPhones, right? Selfish, we put our, 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 uh, our faith in ourselves, we put our faith in, in electronics and devices. Yeah, we have, we have these little idols that we don't even think about a lot of the time, right? Um, okay, and then the last question that I wanted to hear some other thoughts on, is God right to punish people because of their idolatry? Is he correct in doing that? That's kind of a hard question to answer. What do you think? He's God. He can do whatever he wants. I like where your head's at. All right. What you got, Edward? Yes. Yes. Well, you're actually, you're, you're really onto something there that we're going to talk about here in a minute. That's, that's really good. What else you got? Ladies, anybody? What do y'all think? Is God right to punish people because of their idolatry? We got a thumbs up. We got two thumbs up. Three in the back. We got four. We got a lot of thumbs ups. All right. So yes, God is absolutely right to punish people. Uh, because of their idolatry. Uh, but let's look at the Bible. You know, I think this is probably a good place to turn to for answers to questions like these. So uh, anyways, I just have some, some references that I'm going to bring up. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me. If you have your Bible on your phone, get over there because you can probably get there faster with your phone than you can in the Bible. There's a bucket of Bibles back there if you want a Bible. Anybody need one? All right. You know that awkward moment when you should have marked your page, but you didn't? You don't know that? I'm living it right now. All right. So, um, 
Okay, so the question, uh, the que one, uh, one of the, uh, the catechisms is, uh, is what is idolatry? You know, it's, it's that question of what is idolatry? And then uh, the question, is, or the answer is that idolatry is anything you put, yeah, trusting in created things rather than the creator for our hope and happiness, significance, and security. Uh, and then the verse that kind of goes along with that, if you look here in Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verses 21, and then we're going to go to Romans chapter 1, verse 25, it says, For though they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became nonsense and their senseless minds were darkened. You go down to verse 25, it says, They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served something created instead of the Creator, who is praised forever. Amen. So that verse, verse 25, Romans 1, 25, I think perfectly kind of puts a nice wrap around what is idolatry. It's putting something created over the Creator and worshiping that, putting your faith in that. And that is obviously sinful, right? That's, that's not what God had in mind when He created. If you think of biblical examples of idolatry, the first place my mind goes to is in Exodus chapter 32. Exodus 32, Moses is on Mount Sinai. He's literally having direct, like, face-to-face -face interaction with God. And uh, he's, getting the ten, he's getting the Ten Commandments back on these stone tablets because he already broke them once. And while he's up there talking with God, God says, Hey, uh, Moses, you better, you better go ahead and head back down because these people are messing up. And so, um, yeah, so he did. So he goes down there and he finds out that these people have created a golden calf and they're worshiping it. They had built an altar to it. I mean, they had like gone so far off the deep end. Um, that's that is a, a good image of what idolatry is. You know, that's literally building something and worshiping that instead of worshiping God. Um, and then throughout the Old Testament, I mean, there's examples of idolatry uh, all throughout the Old Testament. So, um, and then you look in First Corinthians, go to the New Testament. So, if y'all want to turn with me real quick, I'm going to try to turn there quickly again. Go to First Corinthians chapter 10. And Edward, oh, he left. Uh, anyways, what he said, I'll tell you, is right. Uh, when he said, because he said that idolatry was wrong because people will worship the devil, right? That's what he said. He's actually right on the right, right, on the right track. It says, basically, if, if you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 14 through 22, you read this, this huge warning against idolatry. And, uh, and basically what it ends up with is Paul says that if you're worshiping idols, you're worshiping demons. And you can't worship demons and worship God. He says you can't, uh, you can't drink of the, of the cup of the Lord and of the cup of demons. You can't share in the Lord's table and the table of demons. So that's why, in a nutshell, idolatry is wrong. Because ultimately, you're putting your faith in things that aren't God. And in, in, in the exact opposite of what God is, actually. So um, that's, that's just there. That's, you have the Old Testament example of idolatry. You have this New Testament picture of why it's wrong to, to worship idols. And then... Uh, can it go unpunished? That was the other question in the, in the catechism. Can um, idolatry go unpunished is basically a good way to summarize that. And uh, the answer is obviously no. Everybody was right to answer that way. Uh, idolatry can't go unpunished because God is perfect. Uh, because God's perfect and he demands perfection, uh, and we're not perfect, right? We're selfish, we're sinful by nature. You talked about sin nature, I think, a couple weeks ago. So... Um, so yeah, so no, uh, idolatry can't go unpunished, right? Uh, that kind of leaves us at a, at a bad spot, but I want to show you some examples of God punishing for idolatry. So if you look in Jeremiah, I, I know I'm flipping all over the place in the Bible, sorry, you're just going to have to keep up with me for a minute. But if you look in Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 16, now let me give you some context here. Jeremiah is a prophet, and he's about to have to go and tell these people uh, of Israel that basically you're about to get, you know, taken into captivity and it's not going to be a good time, uh, which is a really hard calling to have. Um, but the question that kind of would you'd think would come up is why are they going into captivity? Why is God going to punish Israel? And if you look at verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 16, God says, I will pronounce my judgments against them for all the evil they did when they abandoned me to burn incense to other gods and to worship the works of of their own hands. So the people of Israel, in this case, they were going to be put in this, you know, this time of captivity. God was going to allow them to be overtaken. Um, people were going to be killed because they turned away from God and they worshiped other gods. That's how seriously God takes this, this idea of idol worship. 
it, it offends him. It's a you know it's a personal offense when you worship something over him, right? That's that's not what he had had in his design. Um, you look at Galatians chapter five, and this is the last passage I'm going to turn to. I promise you. But Galatians chapter five verses nineteen through twenty one talks about the works of the flesh. Um, I think was it last week that y'all talked about what is sin, and then talked about like sin nature. Was that last week? Okay, cool. So. Last week you talked about this, uh, what is sin, um, and, and how you have this sin nature. Well, in Galatians here, there's this huge, there's this, there's this passage here about the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh are uh, inherently sinful because of our sin nature, right? We as, as human beings are going to fall into the temptation to sin, right? Because that's, that's our sin nature. That's where we're kind of headed. So uh, with, that, with that being said... Paul says here uh, in, in verse 19, says, Now the works, I'm going to hold this this time. Now the works of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry. You hear that one? Idolatry. Sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. So, right there. Okay, so this is the New Testament now. We're not in the Old Testament. And still, idolatry is listed as a work of the flesh, as sin, right? Something that we shouldn't do. But then you get this really pretty scary line at the end of, uh, of verse 21 there. It says, As I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, like I said, God takes this idea of idol worship very seriously, and he, he commands against it. In the Old Testament, there's the example of him punishing Israel because of their idolatry. I'm going to trip on this cord one day. I swear it's, I swear it's going to happen. Hold it with one hand. Okay, that's from a singer, so I guess I'll, I'll take the advice. All right, anyways. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so, so God punishes um, idolatry in the Old Testament. You see that very clearly there in Jeremiah. And then you go to the New Testament, and the punishment for idolatry now, I mean, it was then also because it was sin, but but now we we know for a fact that when you you know when you fall into this temptation of idolatry, you you can't inherit the kingdom of God, right? Because sin, what what does sin do? I mean, you learned about this last week. What does sin do? What separates us from God, right? Sin separates us from God. So because of sin and idolatry is sin, we we can't inherit the kingdom of God. And I know that's kind of a, a dark, sad, sour note to end on there tonight, but uh, I think that next week when we get into the next, the next uh, catechisms, the next thoughts, the next questions, um, it's going to kind of you know, wrap that up really well. So unfortunately, yes, you will, you will be punished for your sin, right? Um, but there is, for us as in, in, in Christ, there is a way out of that, right? There is a way out of that, that punishment. Um, and we're going to look at that next week. So we're going to talk about that a whole lot more. But uh, I just wanted to present that idea to you tonight, that, that sin is sin, and God is absolutely right and just to punish it, right? Because he is the creator, and he is above all. And like, uh, who was it Jonathan? Did you say? That, or Marco, you said, because God explicitly told us not to, right? I mean, there's a clear, there's clear you know, uh, rules from God when it comes to things like that. So um, anyways, that's, that's the idea for... For idolatry, and then we're going to get into it a little bit further next week when we talk about um, the freedom that we can have from sin in Jesus. So um, I'm going to pray for us, and then I think the band comes back up here. So uh, I'm going to pray for us real quick, and then band, if you guys want to come on up and play play another song, we'll we'll do that. So, uh, dear God, Lord, we just thank you for this night. We thank you for the opportunity to to study your word, um, to think about you, and uh, and Lord, we do pray that we would um, set our eyes on you, that our goal in life would be to glorify you and to make your name great. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
open this up with prayer. Father God, thank you for speaking through our youth pastor today and just giving us this word of knowledge. And may we put this to our hearts. May we not leave this knowledge within the church and may we keep this for our daily lives. God, you reminded us that sin separates us from you, God. But if we put you first, we will bear the fruits of the spirit. We will bear all these things and we will be more like you, Lord. You will change us in many ways. And Lord, when we leave, may you be with us and may you be with the pastor when he leaves and may we come back together again, Lord willing. It's in your son's name we pray, amen.